Hi! Today in your art studio, I'm going to show you how to use various different drawing materials to create new and interesting blends and techniques. Have fun! Today we will learn some techniques with regular pencil, then we have a sharpener and an eraser, crayons, the old classic, another classic some markers both thick and thin point colored pencils sharpie markers to work with some pen and ink techniques and oil pastels and eventually i will introduce some brush markers some more brush markers and shades of gray, another brand, some amazing micron pens, and then some jelly roll pens, all extra fun stuff to try. An array of shading pencils, kneaded erasers and smudge sticks or blenders, and even some scratch board where we use scratch tools to create an awesome drawing on scratch paper. We begin with a pencil, the old classic and the start of pretty much everything. In terms of erasers, I like to use an art eraser because the pencil kind that comes on the end is typically junky. With pencil, we have all sorts of options just with this one tool. I'm going to begin using the point of the pencil, which is great for detail and line work. And then if I hold my pencil so that the thickness of the graphite is against the paper, I can get a much thicker line and I can create shading and blends this way. It allows shaded areas to blend together more neatly. And you can also create a fade within one pencil line, like here. You can see how in that one single line, it fades from dark at the point to where it's lighter at the edge of the stroke. Crayons! The good old favorite, but they are a valuable art supply. We can still use them even though we are not little kids anymore. Crayons are a really great tool for many things, so we're doing a little refresher. With crayon, your pressure matters a lot. If you push down really forcefully, an area will then be coated with dark color crayon, but you can't add any more over the top of it later on. So if you want to blend, you have to push down lightly enough that you leave a little bit of white paper showing through so you can add another color over the top later on. Markers. We have thin and thick Crayola regular watercolor markers here. And again, you can use these in many different ways. So play around and experiment. With the thicker marker, you can get a pretty thin line if you use just the point. And if you hold it on the side, you get a much thicker version of that same color. With a fine tipped marker, you can get clear, carefully placed thin lines. Next, we'll talk about colored pencils. 
colored pencils are excellent for adding color in a flat way. They're great for shading with color and they're also great for creating blends from one color to the next, similar to what you just saw with crayon. If I would like my colored pencil to fade from orange to another color, I want to start by adding a decent amount of pressure with the orange and then fading out. Here I'm creating a texture with cross hatching. And now back to my fade, I'm having my orange fade into this nice red color by overlapping a little bit onto the orange and then as I get away from the orange I push down harder. Swirly texture. On to Sharpie. Sharpies are one of my favorites for line work and patterning. They're also often used for outlining. If you'd like to outline your whole name, you go right ahead. Otherwise, use them for patterning, detailing, and whatever else you think they're appropriate for. With the ultra fine Sharpie, please be careful not to push down too hard because the points of these easily break off. And when I use them, I often get ideas for what to do next by the shape of whatever it was I did last. And oil pastel. These are great, but they're very smudgy and messy. So I recommend that you don't use them on the cover, that you open up your sketchbook and practice using them on the inside. That way you can close your sketchbook and when it's put away, the mess is contained and won't get all over your stuff and other people's things. All right, let's start with a fade with orange. With oil pastel, you can push down lightly as you see on the left, and you can use them also heavily, as you see me doing on the right. If you use them lightly, you can then go over with another color and get a better blend or mix. If you use them heavily, it's harder to get more on there to then blend nicely. Basically, both are good ways to use the oil pastels. It depends on what your final effect that is desired will be. You can tell that there's just a very different appearance doing basically the same thing with a different amount of pressure. You can get fun textures by going over the top. If you're working with oil pastel and you would like to outline something, don't be afraid to go right up against the last color. They do smudge together, but that's part of the overall look of oil pastel and it's acceptable and okay if it's a little bit smudgy. They're intended to look like paint and they do when they're worked with that way. All right, and now we're on to the high speed portion where you can watch me finish up this sketchbook. Rather, you can watch me finish up this sketchbook cover using all of the materials that we just discussed. I enjoy watching it come together like this.